Hello, this is Aceless John teaching the third part in explaining the splash screen. In our last tutorial, we talked about the activity life cycle, and we're going to pick that up here and we're going to go into much more detail about the life cycle itself. Uh, as I indicated, uh, this is a, talks about this, how the system runs an, uh, an app or an activity. Um, uh, in the system, you, what they, they're what they call stacked. When an activity is started, it's placed on the top of this stack. Now imagine it as if it were a stack of papers and only the one on top is the one you see. And um, the one on top becomes the activity or the app that you're running. The previous activities uh, will also remain in the stack but below it. And they'll only come to the front is when you activate them and they then become the new activity. There's four different uh, states of existence for your uh, activity. An activity um, in the front or in the foreground of the screen is an active or a running activity. An activity that is not on the foreground but in the background somewhere but still visible. Um, these are the ones like if you have them stacked in such a way so you can see more than one uh, that you can sometimes do that on your phone. Um, it's paused. A paused activity is completely alive but um, can be killed by the system uh, in case of there's a need for uh, low memory. In case of low memory, then it, the system will kill it automatically. The next state, or the third state of existence, is stopped. Uh, an app or an activity that is stopped retains all its, its existence, its, its nature, and its information. However, it's no longer visible to the user um, and its window is completely healed, hidden. And this will often also be killed if the uh, system needs memory. And the final stage of existence for an app or an activity is one that has been, of course, destroyed. Uh, usually this is one that you turned off or execute, uh, you've turned off or closed yourself or one that was stopped or paused and it's the system for some reason is finished with it uh, and either asks permission or simply uh, destroys it because it needs the memory. Well, let's go into Java splash screen and look at some of the Java code and uh, see if we can understand uh, some of the aspects of this in light of what we just talked about and uh, having looked at uh, the activity life cycle. First of all, we'll go up here, the public class splash screen extends activity. That tells us that this is an activity. Now, if we go over here and we open up main activity, public class main activity extends, this tells us an activity, but this is the main activity. Here on the splash screen Java, we see on line 16, uh, excuse me, 15, the super dot on create. There's the on create. That's part of our activity life cycle. If we go back to main activity, we see the super dot on create again, uh, being used in the main activity. Here on main activity on line 11, we see set content view, and then r period layout dot activity. Um, underscore main and that's telling us about the information that the R stands for uh, refers to a resource uh, so this is talking about data that's collected in a, in a res folder and uh, if we actually went over here to the res folder to layout we would actually find that activity main that's being called here in this Java file if you'll notice here on the main activity Java We've got the set content, I mean, a super dot on create saved instant state, as well as the same line on the splash screen dot Java. Uh, well, to be over simple, oversimplification of this is what this does, it creates a state of the app uh, where you can change the orientation of the device. Uh, when you start the application, uh, the saved instant state is empty, so nothing will happen. But when you rotate a smartphone or a tablet, Android saves the state of, of the activity uh, so to something called a bundle and then it will reload it. Uh, so if you modify, modify something on the screen when it was uh, when it was in landscape 
uh, or I mean vertical, it would be visible on the landscape version, even though the layout would be a little bit different. Uh, so that's just something that that is done in the background automatically, and you will see this in every uh, app that you are writing. You notice that on uh, the main activity.java, there is no uh, line for on pause or on stop or even on destroy. Um, that means that because they're not there, that means the system will be taking care of that, uh, that on its own. On create is actually called a callback, and there's several of them in uh, Android Studio that you will probably run into. On create, um, this is the first one that you'll ever see, and it's uh, called when the activity is first created. On start, uh, this callback is used when the activity becomes visible to the user. On resume, uh, this is used when the user starts or interacts with the application. On pause, uh, this actually just pauses the activity. It means it cannot take any input and it cannot execute any code. On stop, this callback is activated when the activity is no longer visible. And we already mentioned on destroy, which is the callback that's used by the system uh, when the activity is destroyed. And then on restart is the callback that uh, is used when the activity restarts after having been stopped. Let's look at this line right here in the XML. You might be wondering why this line is XMLNS da 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 Android. Uh, why is it like the first line in the XML file? Well, what you're running across here is that um, an XML, this XMLNS declares a namespace. Well, what's a namespace? Uh, in computing, a namespace is like a unique identifier. Uh, it sets a name up uh, and makes it unique uh, so that there's not going to be an amb ambiguity. Uh, this helps organize the objects uh, of various kinds so that these ob objects can be referred to by their unique name and there won't be any confusion. Uh, XML will use uh, this HTTP schema Android com blah 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 to be unique. Uh, generally this page doesn't exist. In fact it's it's a, what's called a URI not a URL um, but sometimes it actually is a URL uh, that is used to explain the the, the namespace. Um, URI stands for Uniformed Resource Identifier. It's uh, like a string of characters uh, which identifies an internet resource um, usually. Uh, the most common uh, URI is of course the Uniform Resource Locator which you are all familiar with because it identifies an internet domain name address, a domain address. Um, so this one, the URI, uh, is being used here and there's actually another one called the uh, universe resource name or URN which is not very commonly used so basically that's just there to prevent uh, naming conflicts this has been H with John with another Android studio tutorial thank you for joining me don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe